Hail, Holy Mother, who gave birth to the King, who rules heaven and earth forever. These words are taken from the opening antiphon and describe well the celebration for which we are gathered today, the solemnity of Mary, who is the mother of God. We ask the mother of Jesus and our mother to watch over us and protect us as we enter into this new year of 2020. It is also appropriate that today we celebrate a renewal of vows for Brother Maximilian Combs and a first profession of vows for novice Zachary Feldker. It is a day of great joy as they renew the vows and take for the first time the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. It is a great gift to make these vows on this feast day of Our Lady, to imitate her, to follow her in faith, in hope, and in love. But first, we consider this feast day we celebrate, Mary the Mother of God. Of the different mysteries of the life of Our Lady, this one is unique in its humanity because in a special way, we reflect on Mary as a mother. But she was given a special grace and a special gift because she is not only the mother of Christ in his humanity, but also in his divinity. The Council of Ephesus in the year 431 declared this mystery of the life of Our Lady as a matter of faith, that this we believe. She is the Theotokos, the mother of God. What the Council of Ephesus was working to address also had implications and questions about the divinity and the humanity of Jesus. There was confusion, there were heresies and things going on at the time, wondering is Jesus, is there a human Jesus and a divine Jesus, a human person and a divine person? And so at that point, the church declared as well, while declaring Mary the mother of God, that Jesus is a divine person, but he has a human nature and he has a divine nature. The two in the mystery of the incarnation are united and that Mary, by special privilege, is the mother of both. She is not the originator of Jesus' divinity. God the Father, in that Trinitarian union that is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son who is Jesus, God the Holy Spirit, that is the origin and that is the source of Christ's divinity. But he took on flesh and dwelt among us. And he was humble enough then to receive his, his human nature from a human woman. Though deep faith in Mary, that as it became apparent to her, it's like this is part of God's plan. And so she continued actively engaging the word of God in her prayer life. So even though she was passive in receiving his grace, in receiving the Holy Spirit and becoming the spouse of the Holy Spirit to become the mother of God, she was hungry. She was zealous in trying to understand what these mysteries were surrounding her son. One author writes in Mary about her pondering, Mary does not merely guard the words and events passively so as to be able to recall them later, but in such wise as to penetrate their meaning. This is a process typical of a faith which grows and progresses in the understanding of the divine mystery. Further, Mary interprets in her heart or better, she meditates. She spends that time in quiet reflection, meditating on the word of God and the mysteries surrounding the life of the family at Nazareth. The author goes on. She engages all her intellectual energy and her will and heart to penetrate events and words which surpass her in such wise as to grasp them ever more profoundly with the help of grace. Our Lady is zealous. She's passive in receiving the word of God, but she is still very active, very intentional in trying to understand where God's will is in her life and understanding how God is at work. Today, we celebrate the renewal of vows and the first profession of vows for Brother 
Maximilian and Nava Zachary. And as religious as men who are professed, professing the three vows of obedience and chastity and poverty, they are called to imitate Our Lady in a special way. And they are called to be as active and intentional in trying to understand where God is at work in their lives. And they have, that has brought them here. They have been very active in this process. And so a year ago today, Brother Maximilian professed first vows. And he feels called to continue on in this call to holiness, in a unique call to holiness, and in understanding how it is God is at work, but then also being a witness in the world as one who is publicly professing the vows, publicly promising to God that he will live according to the rule and the constitutions of the Fathers of Mercy. And that's what Nava Zachary will do today as well, for the first time. Entering into this atmosphere, this life of perfection, knowing full well of their own imperfections, knowing their need for God's grace, knowing their need for God's activity in their lives, but being open and vulnerable enough to say, I'm ready to commit publicly as a father of mercy and as a representative of the church to be a witness to Christ in the world, but to be a religious, to be a witness in the world of the life of holiness and that heaven is a destination for all of us. That this is what I desire. I desire to bring a little bit of heaven to this life because God has created us for eternal happiness with him in heaven forever. The document in, uh, of the Vatican II document, Lumen Gentium, says this about religious and the call that they are to live. The Catholic Christian who pledges himself to this kind of life binds himself to the practice of the three evangelical councils by vows or by other sacred ties of a similar nature. He consecrates himself wholly to God, his supreme love. In a new and special way, he makes himself over to God to serve and honor him. True, as a baptized Christian, he is dead to sin and dedicated to God, but he desires to derive still more abundant fruit from the grace of his baptism. For this purpose, he makes profession in the church of the evangelical councils. He does so for two reasons. First, in order to be set free from hindrances that could hold him back from loving God and ardently worshiping him perfectly. And secondly, in order to consecrate himself in a more thoroughgoing way to the service of God. That's a long quote. There's a lot there. We're, all of us as baptized Christians are called to holiness. But by professing vows, being set apart in a special way by this public profession, these men and all who have professed vows are relieved in a certain sense of certain worldly duties, but then we become prayers by profession, prayer warriors, mercy warriors, if you will, because of our unique call as fathers of mercy. So we're set aside in the work that we do for the church becomes something unique and, with, and the vows help to free us in a certain way. There's a freedom with which we enter into this religious life of consecration. We're called to build up the holiness of the church. You know, there's a, uh, you've all seen or maybe heard on the radio, the Liberty Mutual jingle. You know what I'm talking about because there's the funny looking dude with the cheesy mustache and the emu liberty 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 now it's in your head for the rest of the day but what a religious is called to do holiness 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 it's called to be a witness to holiness in the world that we can be holy in the world, that this is a possibility for us. And especially then for Fathers of Mercy. Fathers of Mercy are called to be merciful here, seek mercy themselves, to recognize their own need for God's mercy, to share it with their confreres, and then to take that mercy out through the preaching that we do, through the service that we provide in the parishes. 
And so I, I give you a third jingle. Now you know what the Latin translation is for misericordia motu, or for uh, he was moved with mercy. He was moved with mercy. Misericordia motus est. He was moved with mercy. We receive that mercy ourselves. We share it with our brothers. And then one day we take that out, ordained as priests, to share that mercy in the world. There's a saying. It says that everyone wants to change the world. No one wants to change the toilet paper roll. There is a fidelity to the little things in life that we do and the way we live as religious in that call to holiness. That's why we spend a long time in preparation in postulancy and novitiate and then as brothers in studying. And then when the priests come back, there is a time to really reconnect in that life of prayer to recall who we are as consecrated religious and to imitate Our Lady and to be very intentional as she was in engaging the Word of God and as she did in the Gospel today to reflect and ponder these things in her heart. And so too, each one of us is called to ponder our call of God's will in our heart. And we pray in a special way today for Brother Maximilian and for Nava Zachary as they take this next step in their lives as fathers of mercy. Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen.